out there in the Boston Radio Network, bostonradioshow.com. They bring my man John did it real good for you people. We have a great show for you this week. Got two great coaches, Sam Joe of San Diego, the Toreros, and we go down in Middle Tennessee State, my rival from Tennessee State, Nick McBee on the show for a great conversation. We have our weekly contributors as well with Boss Report, emails, and also John Huckle about his Florida man sponsored by his homeboy, China Man, John. <laughs> You gotta watch our China man, man. He's he's still he's still on the heels. He's still four man's heels, right? Very much so, and I love it when when they actually meet each other. Oh, that that makes for great material when they meet each other. Oh yeah, you don't know what's gonna pop off when those two in the same room together. And what you see it, and what you see, and, and, and John, I gotta remember back from the old the old show, the dark archive shows of. Our good, my our good buddy Reverend Dersher. Do you remember that show, John? Oh yeah, absolutely. Reverend Dersher. It's one of the all time classics. <laughs> well, the Rev is getting married, John. Oh gosh, <laughs> the dir- the dirtiest <laughs> wedding in history. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the Rev wants me to be quote his best man. Really? Um, I, I yes. don't know if I I don't know if I can advise you to do that. I mean, I, I feel like you might have to be careful with that one. <laughs> Uh, absolutely not to go. I don't want to be involved with that dirty wedding. Does that mean I have to wear, like, you know, faded clothes from Goodwill or something? Or something? You, <laughs> you never know, man. You know, when you're getting involved in the dirtiest wedding in the world, you have no idea what's what's coming your way. So that's what I'm saying. You got to be careful when you accept that invitation. Exactly. I, I would rather go to a B- BSA crap party. You know, that <laughs> that's saying something. <laughs> I'd rather deal with that than go dealing with the dirtiest wedding ever. But yeah, he called me. He's like, boss, I want you to be my best man at my wedding. Wedding. <laughs> and John, I'm going to be like a jerk, but I'm thinking to myself, what woman would actually lay there and take that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, That's my it take. It is an interesting question, to be sure. <laughs> uh. That... Hey. That is truly my take, my good brother. You're going to have to creep up on his Facebook and see what's up. So, uh, yeah, man, yeah, I don't know about my good brother. That works for me. And uh, also, my good brother, talk to the people we're saying, you've done a great job with it. Uh, this week, you hit to put up there, uh, last week's show, 17 segments, my man. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's a lot of segments you put up there, but bro, talk to the people about the website and how, how the, the mobile version versus the desktop version, the iPad, I've been mean, questions about it. So I think it's best to allow you this opportunity to explain to listeners about BossManShow.com and how to navigate it, whether you're on the mobile or you're on the desktop. Yeah, basically, we're just working on some of the kinks, you know, that's part of the the soft rollout we did putting it out there so we can see how it's going to react when we go live and kind of kind of tweak it based on the feedback that we get from listeners which is the process we're in now so you know if you've been logged on to uh, the desktop site you probably haven't had too many issues if you log out of the mobile you might see things a little bit you know out of whack things are formatted a little bit differently um but that's part of the process so we're working through that getting all those things dialed in and over the course of the next uh few uh, coming days and weeks we should have it all dialed in working 100 percent or at least 99.999 percent and uh we'll be off and running so i'm, I'm satisfied with the way it's coming and uh you know listen if, if you're happy with the boss i'm happy with it oh yeah man i like it it's very smooth and it's it's getting prepared i can't i don't i can't complain to anybody you're doing a, doing a hell of a job uh the well master himself say, <laughs> man <with> plan. <laughs> the man behind some, the screen <laughs> some kind of plan anyway Exactly, man, old man, folks. Thank you for supporting the Audio Boom site. It's been great. Uh, I love it. I put it on LinkedIn as well. Just my honor. Facebook is the Boss Man Show. Jared the Boss Man as well on Facebook. Twitter, Jared the Boss Man. Also, the Boss Man Show on who I get this rap popping. That's on me. IG will get back popping. I guarantee that. The Men Warehouse, I guarantee it. It'll be back popping. We still got on Stitcher. Still got that Tune In Radio. iHeart, Deezer, Passbox. Tune in radio, Spreaker. So we we still done. We got the, all the apps, man. That's why I still John. There is no reason nobody cannot find this show anymore. No, 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 no reason at all. Because uh, this show is everywhere, everywhere. And 
because of what we put in, we'll be able to leverage this show and get more affiliates down the road because of the work we put in. And John, like, I mean, I tell you what, I was telling you yesterday off the air, man, uh, for what we do, for what we do, we don't know about off the air. This is amazing feat what, what we pull off every week here on the Boss Man Show. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's the way that all that's, uh, you know, that goes on behind the scenes to get the show out every week. And, uh, you know, it, it's just something that the listeners, we try to get a little bit behind the scenes here and there, but it's hard to um, get a real picture of it unless you see it in action. Maybe someday you will. Maybe someday we'll, do a little, we'll get into some video, uh, you know, video logs about how we uh, get the show together each week and give everybody an idea of what goes on and some of the, you know, nonsense that happens between us <laughs> during the week. <laughs> Edit it out, of course. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, folks, just know, I never know so the day before the show whether we're going to have a show for the guest. So let's say that. And they say, I don't know who's going to join the show before, before, before we do the show. I just don't know. And you know, it's like, so I was like, hey, that's to me, not knowing who's going to join the show before you go there is something that's amazing. And we still get the good guests we get, so just know that. Well, also, e- the, email us. I just was saying, also, you don't know what's going to happen, you know, from a, a news standpoint either. I mean, that, that changes... You know, minute to minute, so it stops off on us that we weren't planning on talking about that we have to address. Then you know that's a whole other thing. Man, what you just said it's always a commotion. You always got to be flexible and always be ready to move with the time and the news. And email us also with holla. Bossmanradio.com is holla h o l l a at bossmanradioshow.com. So we get the emails from so people. Great show this week. For example, we also have. Nick McDevitt, we also have our correspondent who joins on the show. So, folks, get ready. Don't get off. Great show for you. Stick around. Stay. We'll be back shortly at break. I'm chilling heavy. Understand me, baby. This thing's for boot. I'm chilling heavy. Understand me, baby. This thing's for boot. I'm chilling heavy. Understand me, baby. This thing's for boot. I'm chilling heavy, understand me, baby, this like so cool. Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach. T Will 24 or Instagram Travis L Williams 24 or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grinding NC, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it, get it.
the JR the Boss Man Show. We're joined by the new head coach, the San Diego Toreros out there on the west coast of San Diego, a beautiful town. Coach Sam Show, Coach Show, talk to us. How's the weather out there in sunny San Diego, California? Yeah, it's actually, we, we go through a little bit of a period uh, every year in June where we get a little bit of a June gloom. We get we get a bunch of days uh, in a row where it kind of stays cloudy all day. But for the other 11 months of the year that we get to enjoy some of the most beautiful weather on earth, uh, we, we can we can make it through. Now, Coach, shockingly here in Atlanta, it's 82, 82 degrees, Coach, and it's not humid and windy today. I'm shocked. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's crazy. That's a good day right there. That is a beautiful day in Atlanta. A lot of beautiful days, but that's definitely a beautiful day in Atlanta right there. You get up there, right, Coach? So, uh, John and I are not getting choked out by sap today in, in humidity. So we're, we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's outstanding. I love it. I love it. Now, Coach, I want to ask you, man, what does it mean to you, Coach, that you've been on Toronto as long as you have, been around the program, and you, now you're the head man leading this program, putting your own stamp on this university in the city of San Diego here going forward as the head man of the Toreros? Oh, it's a, it's an extremely humbling uh, opportunity and one that I'm deeply appreciative of. of um, it, 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 it's been a program that means so much to me and, and really – you know, helped make make me a man, and it was like the, I came through USD as a player. It was the last steps of, you know, before you know, moving out to the real world, and then was blessed and, and lucky enough to have an opportunity to work for a great man in, in, in Brad Holland, and who started me off in the business and taught me the business in the right way. Um, and so that it had to have an opportunity to come back and and and, and lead this program uh, and to try and try to establish a tradition is what we're really trying to do. Uh, is it's an exciting and, and like I said, a very humbling opportunity. So, Coach, you mentioned, you know, establishing tradition is something that speaks to a long-term goal, and it, it seems to me that in order to have achievable, attainable long-term goals, you have to have a good, solid relationship with your administration. And so if you could speak to that a little yeah. bit, the, the administration of the university, along with the community, what is it about those folks that, that resonated with you and made you feel comfortable in making this decision? Oh, that, that's a great question, and I'll, I'll start at the top with our, with our president, Dr. Jim Harris. You know, I had an opportunity when I first met Dr. Harris. He's one of the most impressive, genuine humans that you'll ever meet. I mean, met him in, we were in Alaska for the Great Alaska Shootout in our first season here. And he came to, you know, be with the team and to meet everybody. He was brand new on the job. And, and he's one of those guys where you meet him for five minutes and, you, and you're like, you want to ask him if he, he'll be your best friend. I mean, he's just that, he's just that impressive of a guy and just such a big, uh, genuine and he's just leading our university to so many special things and so many different um, aspects of, of life. Uh, and then, you know, having an opportunity to have my first head coaching job uh, with an athletic director in, in McGillis is, is a very, very um, awesome opportunity for me. Every time I meet with Bill, I talk with Bill, he gives me something that helps me improve. He gives me something that uh, I need to be looking at that will help our program improve. Talk with him, I get better. And so as a, as a brand-new head coach – I don't think there's a, a better opportunity um, to have a to work for an AD that that can do that for you on a daily basis. Now, Coach, uh, what do you feel I'd be the biggest adjustment for you moving over that one seat to being the head man? So, how's that adjustment been for you? And when it comes to on court, I think it would be the biggest adjustment for you being the head man and rather than being the assistant. Well, I, I think the the biggest thing is it was I was pretty lucky to have an opportunity at the end of our season to to coach four games and it kind of, you know, kind of a little trial by error a little bit to see how it was going to be um, for the, um, you know, for if I was able to, to get, at that point to get the head coaching job. And, and so I, I've kind of got a feel for, for how my style is going to be. And, you know, and a lot of people just told me that just, just coach to, to who you are and, and, and don't try to be anybody else. And so uh, I think my style is to be uh, during the week and leading up to our game to be very, very, uh, um, fiery and competitive and getting us ready to play. But then when it's time to play, you know, we're going to let go out and trust our work. We're going to trust our preparation and the guys in the work that we've done with our guys and, and let them go out and make plays. You know, I want guys to play free uh, offensively, but on the defensive end, I want us to be intense, tough, gritty, competitive, um, and, and really be aggressive and overall opportunities to really try to inflict our will on other teams. Um, but the, the biggest challenge actually is what I've been going through this last month is just, is just that you know you get into that seat and then it's you know every facet 
of the program is under your control. And so the planning and, and the when to implement and all that stuff is, uh, is kind of been the biggest challenge. And, you know, it's taking up a lot of my time and focus. Well, now, Coach, uh, one of the things that uh, falls under the umbrella that you just spoke of is recruiting. And, and JR and I like to yeah. discuss recruiting with uh, new head coaches such as yourself and, and what your yeah. – uh, you know, game plan is going to be in that regard. Are you going to go uh, with high school freshmen, JUCO guys, transfers, a mix of these three, maybe an international guy? You can always, you know, mm-hmm. call in. I actually have a couple years of eligibility left. Jr. he burned all his it. good days. So. <laughs> I'll give you I a fifth year senior, coach. Great. Fifth year senior. <laughs> oh, beautiful. We need one. We need that right now. We need that experience. Now, you know, the big, I've been in the WCC my whole career uh, as an assistant and now as the head coach. And as a player as well, so it's 20 years plus. And one of the things I've noticed with our with our conference is, you know, there's been teams that not named Gonzaga or BYU or or St. Mary's that have had an, that have gotten up and towards the top part of the league and, and contending level, and they usually do that with juniors and seniors. But then, those, a lot of those teams though have then gone and replaced those juniors and seniors after playing at a contending level in our conference, and then gone and replaced them with a bunch of freshmen. That's tough. That's a, now, you're, now you're asking for a long, long row because this is a very, very good basketball conference with some unbelievable coaches. And so what our plan is to, to do our very, very best to um, get old and stay old. And ways of doing that, this past year we registered at four freshmen. Uh, that's one way to stay old. Uh, I think we're a, we could be a tremendous, um, call it our four-to-four four transfer school. You know, when you think about maybe a, a young man playing at the high major level and not in the role that he would want to, to be able to just take a slight step down to the WCC and play a very, very competitive basketball, nationally recognized basketball, and have an opportunity to have a bigger role. Or somebody at a, maybe a quote-unquote lower level having an opportunity to step up to, a, again, a, a nationally recognized type of conference uh, and have a chance to, to play a big role on our team that way. So we're going to spend a lot of time in making sure we put the right transfers in at the right spots. Uh, we, you know, you always got you got to recruit high school. You always do, but I think you have to be make sure you're you're bringing in high school guys at the right spots, uh, with the right opportunity that they're going to be able to succeed in right away, and then build their careers from that. And and then we've also had a great opportunity to we have three international guys, and I like the experience that international international young men bring. You know, and just it's just a little bit different, um, a little different aspect of basketball out there that they they play and they're involved in. And and so I think they also bring a little bit extra experience that way. So I would think I would say a big part of our theme recruiting wise is that, you know, what can we do to ha- to continue to bring in great experience to our program? Folks, you have Sam's show here with the San Diego Trails head coach here on the Boss Man Show with JR and John. And now coach, when people watch your game play this year, who missed you in those four games you had in the end of last season. When people who watch your team play come this season, what do you want them to take away from seeing your team play every night and represent the University of San Diego? I love that question. I think that the number one thing I want them to come away is that that team's really, really connected. They play for each other, and and they're they're playing to make the guy next to them better. Uh, I really hope that 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 comes through in in our play. Uh, The second thing I would say, I really hope that people come away and say, that's a really gritty, tough defensive team that really, really pursues the ball at a high, high level and a relentless level. And then third, offensively, that's a team that plays – plays with with great spacing, plays free, and, and plays for each other, creates offense for each other, uh, and trying to find you know the best shot time and time again, and, and doing that with a lot of pace. Um, so I would say that those would be the three things that I would hope people would walk away from after watching a USD Terrell basketball game. Now, Coach, on that note, we'll swing it over to scheduling, you know, uh, how your guys yeah. are going to play, how what people are going to see on the court, who they're going to see you playing against. What is your intent uh, when you go about making this non-conference schedule? Are you going to try to um, go heavy on tough opponents and really, you know, give give your guys a, a real tough non-conference to prepare them for conference play? Or are you going to do a little mix where you kind of have maybe I don't, don't want to say cupcakes, but a couple cupcakes in there, mm-hmm. let them beat up on some people, you know, and then uh, yeah, right. some tougher games that are going to challenge them. How do you see yourself going about that non-conference schedule? Well, I think every year is a is a, a, a brings a different uh, identity to your schedule. And uh, that identity is all based off what your team looks like. Next year we return, or we return, we all lost one guy from last year's team. Uh, we returned 65 points a game from our four seniors and we returned the other uh, 11 scholarship players. You know, so we have great depth and experience in scoring. So uh, we feel like we have everything physically um, to be able to contend at a, at a really high level. Now there's a lot of work we still have left to do to make sure we're contending. 
Um, but with what we have in place, you know, we're putting together a schedule where, you know, we're, we're going for it. We're, we're, we want to have a schedule that enables us to be, be looked at as a, as a contender for an at-large bid. Um, so we, we're, we're still very much in that, in that process, but we have, you know, we have games at Old Miss, at, um, at San Diego State, um, Colorado coming to our place, and we're trying to schedule a couple more quote-unquote quadrant one type of games. You know, they're using that quadrant term a lot now. Um, and then after this, you know, again, it'll just be based off kind of what the roster we have. I think we're always going to put together a schedule that um, gets us, uh, gives us great confidence through playing tough opponents and also getting wins uh, to get us ready to play in a very, very competitive conference schedule. Um, but we always want to be going into that, like I said, off, off some great confidence coming from one of those two types of games. And, uh, Coach, if you could, uh, with some coaching individuals who really had a great impact on you professionally and personally in, in the business here, and who are some guys who just been kind of helping you as you kind of took over this, this new rope in the head, man, moving that one skid up and making decisions for this program going forward? Uh, I, mean, I have so many great mentors that have just uh, blessed my life and my coaching career in so many ways. Like I, I mentioned before, Brad Holland, who, again, really taught me this business and is the all-time winning this coach here at the university of San Diego. And he's just given me such great, valuable advice in so many different levels, um, as a man, as a father, and as a coach, uh, David Fisdale, who's best man in my wedding and, uh, who I played for and, and coached with here, uh, at the university of San Diego, who's now the head of the New York Knicks. You know, he's given me some very, very valuable advice just in terms of, he said, you know, don't worry about making the great decision. Just don't make the bad one, you know, and, and, and just, stay away from making the really bad decision uh and then to you know to keep to, to keep poised in everything that i do and to, to not get emotional um so he's given me great great advice and then i've gone back to, to the guys who really started my love for coaching and my high school coaches back in Geek harbor washington who have always been great mentors and taught me so much about you know the right way to coach and the right way to treat people and and and, and the guys that you're around every single day and so i've gone and used them so i've gone a lot of different different ways i've gone in, in the conference kyle smith who i probably would not be standing here today if kyle smith had given at university of san diego had given me an opportunity um to walk on here at the university of san diego and pursue my dreams of being a college coach he's given me great advice in you being in the, in the league with us um so so many great people in my life that i'm so very fortunate to have had you know uh bless my life in so many ways okay coach i, I just want to circle back to uh the recruiting uh a question a little bit jr and i i just want to give you our three best qualities on the court so that when recruiting time comes up you know you know when you're sitting in the living room across from us trying to bring us in you know you know what we can bring <laughs> to the table okay so for me i love it. i, love I, I it. take I'm a ready. charge i can take a charge like nobody's business okay uh, i'm That's feisty great. on like defense that. feisty on defense and i look good, good in headband coach headband game is on point I look real good <laughs> in the headband. now jr uh, jr he can stroke it from downtown and not only can he do that but he good. does it in dress shoes he can do it in dress shoes which means wow. he can come off the bench at any time even if he's in street clothes there you go. he can come off the bench right then and there and stroke the three for you so just saying that's that's, that's where our that's where our game's at right jr yes and coach yes i i beat an nfl player playing horse in stacy adams coach <laughs> that's slip impressive. and slide but still doing crossovers in ac adams now oh man no, that, <laughs> that's his own good that's good yeah, that's great. That is very impressive. That is very impressive. I, it sounds like if we could just combine you two guys into one, we'd have a really heck of a player now. <laughs> oh, you'd have something, exactly. all right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, Coach, they can't forget our personal sixth man, J.T. Smith. He'll love to be on your team. He's six foot four. He's, six foot four. he's from Memphis, so he, he can ball a little bit, and he's a free spirit. He'll defend the oh, rebound. Good. See, the shoot his wide open three. Now, <laughs> I think that right, John. <laughs> Keep in mind, Coach, that we've been pitching this for about – uh, the better part of five years now to coaches all across the country. Yeah, and we're still behind yeah. the mic, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I definitely <laughs> will. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. Yes, indeed. Well, Cold Show, if you come in town for that Peace Jam, love to have you have you come by and see us, man. I, I know oh, a lot of you come in town for that. Yeah, that would be great. Yes, I'm it. planning on that. I'm planning on coming to Peace Jam. That would be outstanding. I'm going to take you up on that. Yeah, man, you know, we have a good time. Good time, Atlanta, man. We have a great time down there, man. So hopefully you can come by. You got my number, so love to have you great. come by and see us, man. Have a great time. I love it. When all you guys come to town, hanging out with you all, eating the great food of Atlanta, enjoying the hot sun, of course, and everything, and the yes, brave yes, game, yes, too. So it's always fun. You guys, y'all, y'all guys come out here and see us, man. That'd be great. I would love to. I'll definitely plan on that. That'd be outstanding. All right, Coach. We'll talk to you real soon, man. 
definitely. Look, thanks so much, guys, for your time. I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you. You're welcome. Anytime, buddy. Thank that. Thanks. You have a blessed day. man show we have a returning guest he's now he's at middle tennessee state university down in murfreesboro about 30 miles from Wildwood school as you guys know tennessee state it's doing only nick mcdevitt on the boss man show coach mcdevitt i know you're living in murfreesboro area the nashville metro area your family has to be enjoying it man we really are we've uh been here a couple months now uh about two and a half months and really enjoying getting to know the community and the area and all the people here it's uh it's been hectic, uh, but it's it's been great getting to know this place uh, better, better. Now, Coach, you have been at Asheville since 1997, so I know it had to be something really, very really special for you to leave Asheville after all these years. So what was it about President McPhee, Chris Massaro, and the Middle Tennessee administration that kind of say it's, it's kind of won you over, you and your family over, say, hey, it's time to make this move with the Murfreesboro, take over this, this program in Commerce USA here? Well, you just kind of nailed it. Uh, it. It was definitely going to take something special uh, for uh, myself and, and my family and all of us to want to leave Asheville because Asheville is a great place. Uh, the city is, but UNC Asheville as a university is a great place. Uh, where I went to school, it's where a lot of my family went to school. So uh, we knew that if we were ever to leave Asheville, it's going to have to be a great situation. And that's what we found uh, at Middle Tennessee. Uh, from the people and, and uh, you know, President McPhee and Chris Massaro and a lot of the coaches uh, that have been here, the head coaches, when you look around, have been here 10, 12, 15 years. Same thing with the, a lot of the administration here on campus. So we knew that there had to be something special here because the place uh, continues to gain in national recognition and notoriety, not just the basketball program and what Coach Davis and his staff did for uh, 16 years, but also – uh, the football program, uh, the, the the women's basketball program, uh, you, you look at what the university is doing, continues to grow not only in recognition but just the footprint as well. Uh, all the things that President McPhee has done, uh, Murfreesboro as a city is the fastest growing city in the state of Tennessee, one of the top ten in the country, uh, located just about 25, 30 minutes right outside of Nashville. So. The combination of all those things just uh, got uh, our family more and more excited about the opportunity when it arose. So, uh, you know, we're we're really lucky and fortunate to be here and uh, join our time and hoping to, to continue to grow this basketball program. Now, as coach, I probably told you before, coach, but I still have a home in Nashville. So I come up from Atlanta and I come to Murfreesboro. I always see the, a crane of construction going on in some new <laughs> time I come through there. So you're right. It's definitely growing because I remember when Murfreesboro was nothing but just grass and fields. I remember that <laughs> coming down there, down in 05, 06. I remember those. And now if we, you look even around the campus, you see construction, you see free paving, you see different things around campus for the students. So in the MTSU, I think it's one of the biggest, probably outside of UT Knoxville and Memphis, the biggest school in Tennessee, probably. Right? Is that right, Coach? That's right. We're uh, just over twenty thousand students. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, the 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 enrollment here at the university has been between twenty and twenty five thousand uh, for really about the last six, seven, eight years. And so, between that and the the multiple um, undergrad programs, the graduate school opportunities that we have here. Uh, the school just uh, continues to grow, like I said earlier, not just in the things that we offer and, and the national recognition and notoriety, but uh, we opened up a brand new $150 million science building within the last two years. Uh, there's just $800 million worth of campus uh, construction under President McPhee's watch. So uh, a lot of things going on on this campus, and those are the things like – uh, that I said earlier that really excited us that uh, the people that are in place here are doing a great job 
it's one thing that if the people that have been in place here have been here for a long time, but the place is stagnant and not growing. Uh, but that's not the case. Uh, you look at uh, the athletic department in general uh, or as a whole, uh, they've they've continued to grow from being a part of the Ohio Valley Conference and then moved into the Sun Belt, then moved into Conference USA and uh, continued to, to try to uh, push the needle and, and push this program as a whole, uh, continue to push it uh, forward. I got two, I got two part two part of where you hear coach. Think about this coach. Uh, you, you, it's good when you get a job when a coach left the job in good standing. Like he, coming coach Davis left you a great situation, which probably helps you want to come as well. How he built this program all the years. He was in the middle of middle Tennessee, and then you play in conference USA. So it's not so much a one B league per se. You can actually get in at, at large if you, if you play the right schedule. So for you, coach, knowing that hey. I can recruit nationally again because Nate Milton's a national brand now. Also, and also playing at conference now. If you if you, if you miss out on the trans conference championship, you might still have a chance to get in the tournament that way as well. Yeah, and that's some things that we're looking into both with our non-conference schedule uh, and being pretty pretty careful in particular about who we're scheduling there. Which I thought Coach Davison and, and his staff did a great job, particularly last year. Uh, had one of the top fifteen. Um, you know, strength of schedule, non-conference strength of schedule in the country. Uh, they couldn't have done much more on a scheduling standpoint to to put themselves in position to get an at-large bid. But our league, in particular, is looking into and did uh, go to a, a strategic scheduling model for our conference games as well, where the top five teams in the league will definitely play each other twice. And uh, those second games will come in the last four games of the season. One through five will all play each other in their 15th through 18th games of conference uh, of conference play to do exactly what you just said, to try to give ourselves as a league a better chance of getting an at-large bid to get a second team in the tournament, but to also try to increase uh, the seed line of our automatic qualifier, uh, the, the league representative – uh, has been somewhere between 12 and uh, 15 over the last five or six years. And uh, just trying to look at some creative ways in both non-conference and conference scheduling uh, to try to increase the profile of our uh, individual teams. And, and now, Coach, with non-conference scheduling, with middle of Tennessee being in the middle of the middle, middle state pretty much, you can play Tennessee, Memphis if they want to play you, Tennessee State, Vanderbilt, Lipscomb, Belmont, all within drive distance and get back in the day, and the fans can, can come see you all play. So is that something you're looking into, maybe try to strike up some of those re- re- regional rivalries once more to kind of get that flavor going for that middle Tennessee area, for all of the teams, college and schools right there that you can play non-conference, but it may not help you wise, RPI-wise, but just kind of get the rivalries going just for the commu- community at, at large. Yeah, I think, uh, again, you have to, to strike a balance of scheduling games that can both help you uh, with with your uh, non-conference RPI, but also games that are fun for your fans to watch, places that when you're playing away games that your fans can travel and get to. Uh, and that's really what we're doing uh, this year and want to continue doing as we move forward, playing Vanderbilt, Belmont, Murray State, uh, Ole Miss is coming up and playing us uh, at Bridgestone Arena in December. Uh, so we're, we're trying to continue the, the um, you know, playing the, a lot of the local teams. And uh, I just think those are, are games that the fans like them, uh, the alumni, the, the current players, the coaches, administration. Uh, those are just fun games to, to kind of have bragging rights in your area and at work when you go see uh, – your buddies that may have graduated from some of the opposing schools and, uh, you know, in, in conference play, we do a lot of traveling. You know, we have conference games all the way from Texas to Florida up to West Virginia and everywhere in between. So uh, to get a chance in non-conference play uh, to, as you said, to be able to get in the bus and go play the game, turn around and come back home, uh, is kind of a welcome break. So uh, we'll, we'll try to find ways to, to, again, strike that balance of, um, you know, playing some nationally recognized opponents and at the same time uh, be able to play some uh, local opponents as well that uh, the fans and everybody else are interested in. 
yeah, I wish y'all played Georgia Tech or Georgia State coach right in my back, y'all. <laughs> but I know they they don't want to they 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 play you guys. I've already <laughs> thrown it out there. They, they don't want to play you all. I've already tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, again, those are those are games that uh, we're interested in playing as well. We we recruit Georgia pretty heavily. Uh, we did at Asheville. Middle Tennessee has done so in the past, and we will continue to do so now that we are here. And uh, being able to, you know, really return some guys that are here that grew up in Georgia and the surrounding area to go back home and play the University of Georgia and play Georgia Tech and perhaps. Uh, start series home and home series with them or two for one perhaps if if that need to to happen to get a chance to have those teams come to the murphy center and come here to murfreesboro uh or games that uh, we're interested in scheduling as well and now coach speaking of recruiting coach now will you be going to a i trying to use all four ways getting high school guys juco's transfers the fifth year guys maybe and even an international guy too if you like like, like what you see if it's a good fit for you or you're going to try to do it you know a certain way it, since you get getting started out there at, Mur- at murfreesboro down there no i think uh as you just alluded to our ability here uh to go a, a multitude of routes and a lot of different avenues to recruit quality players here is obviously attractive and one of the things that that really attracted me uh, to the job as well is that you can continue to build the program in a lot of different ways Uh, whether you need uh, to to be older faster uh, you're able to do that whether it be through junior college transfers or grad transfers uh, you know, to, to be able to go find prep school kids, four-year high school young men, uh, kids that may have to uh, transfer from a high major school and sit out a year and they're eligible, uh, sit one, play two, sit one, play three. Uh, there's just a lot of different ways uh, that you can kind of build your program and build your roster year in and year out here at Middle. And uh, to have that ability and that flexibility is, is a bonus. And, uh, Coach, I know you guys are going to four hours this year for his workout time. So will you be more so working on player development or are you just going to try to implement some schemes as well while trying to develop your players you got and evaluate and tell them you're having your roster as you look forward to building a roster down, down the road? Yeah, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, we'll probably do a lot of uh, – a little bit more scheme, overall scheme stuff this year than uh, that we w- than we would do in most other years just because uh, even us as a staff, we're, we're new here. Uh, the players have never uh, played in the system or learned terminology. So uh, things that after a couple of years, your veteran players, your older players, uh, they've been running those kinds of things and doing those kind of things for two or three years. That's just not the case uh, with our team this year. We'll have three seniors on this year's team. Uh, but it will be year one for them uh, in this system. So you're really trying to teach this system uh, to every single person on your team. And so the the sooner that they get comfortable with that, the better. Uh, At the same time, you do have to continue developing your players as individuals so that their individual skill level uh, is allowed to, to really show itself and they're able to perform within the team setting and within the team scheme. And so you're really trying to uh, strike a balance in, in teaching your overall system, uh, but continue to develop your individual players at the same time. And so, Coach, in doing that, um, how much are you trying to work on getting them to buy in now and be, be become one with you and the staff? Because I know it's always weird when a coach leaves and you want the guy that recruited them. They kind of always had a semi wall up towards you. So how are you going to the staff going about trying to break down that, that wall and get the guys to buy in and trust you and your staff and know that you, even though you do recruit them, you have, you have the best interest at hand no, no matter what because you're part of this team and you, you now you're the, you're the, their, their guy and they, and they just trust you. Yeah, I think it's just being genuine and and open and, um, you know, being honest with them day in and day out. Uh, You know, I think you have to be yourself. Uh, They're young, but they're not dumb. And so uh, they they can pick up on whether you're you're trying to be something you're not and uh, or someone that you're not. And so that's that's really been my approach uh, from day one here, but also from Day one when I got into, you know, coaching college basketball was uh, to, to be yourself, 
and uh, that's really what we're trying to do. I think the guys uh, are really truly bought into what we're doing. They they were having fun with what we're doing uh, in the spring. Now at that time, you're not facing any adversity either. You're not losing games in yeah. April and May, and so. Uh, you know, you, at some point throughout the season, you face a little bit of adversity because perhaps you're not playing as much as you want to, or you went through a, a two or three game losing streak. You know, that's when uh, you have to have everyone bought in, everyone on the same page, everyone's playing for each other, those kinds of things. And that's really what you try to build. Uh, at least that's what we're trying to build uh, backing up to the last week of March uh, when we got here all the way until the second week in November when games start. And so uh, we're kind of in the middle of that process right now. We started summer school Monday, uh, just two days ago. So we're actually having our first workout this afternoon, later on this evening of summer school. And as you mentioned, we they bumped the, the amount of time we can have with them on the floor each week from two hours to four hours. And so we'll have several one to one and a half hour team workouts each week. And uh, during that time, we'll do a lot of team stuff and sprinkle in some individual time to, to develop their skill level. And um, hopefully we can keep building this thing this summer. Coach, I got a couple more for you, Coach. Now, I got to ask you about food. Uh, what's been your favorite food spot in Murfreesboro so far or in Nashville, <laughs> Pierce, since you've been in town? <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you, there are so many. I was telling some folks yesterday, I spoke to a group uh, at lunchtime yesterday and told them, uh, I, I think I'm enjoying the food around here a little bit too much. Uh, but there, there are some there are great places in Murfreesboro to go eat. Uh, there really are. And, uh, you know, we, we've had, obviously had uh, a lot of uh, visits over the last couple of months with prospects being on campus. And uh, during their official visits, uh, most of the time you're going out to eat with them and trying to wine and dine them a little bit. So uh, during those visits, particularly, uh, you get a chance to go around town and uh, go to different restaurants. And uh, I don't think I've had a bad meal since I've been over here. So I'm pretty sure you've been to Toots then, Coach. I'm pretty sure of that. Oh, no doubt. Toots, <laughs> Puckets, uh, yeah, Five Senses, Mimi's, Bar Louie, Jonathan's. Uh, you name it, we've been there. Hey, coach, I love it. Now, I mean, it's been, it's been, it's been the Jack's Barbecue, Coach. You've been, you've been there before, Coach? Just about every barbecue spot in town uh, we've been to. There, My man, the Coach. Pig, Mission Barbecue, uh, Jim and Nick's. We've been all over the place. Coach, when I come to town, we got to get some barbecue, man. <laughs> I love me some Jackson Buckets and Jim yeah, and Nick's, man. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. We're in the same boat. I love it, man. Hey, when, hey, hey, Coach, every time I come to Nashville, I leave back with a bunch of barbecue back to Atlanta with me. Because that's what I take back with me. I, I eat barbecue like a whole week, man. A whole week doing barbecue. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm I'm always down for some good barbecue. Hey, Coach, I'll tell you what, Coach. I'm happy for you at this job. I look forward to coming down here and seeing you guys, man. I'm, and since when I come through town, I'm going to stop by and see you, you and Eric and the guys over there, man. See Check, check in with you and your team, man. I'm so happy for you, Coach. Look forward to seeing you real soon. You come, you come to Peace Jam, Coach. Hope, hope to have you come down in the studio with us as well, man. That'd be great. Look forward to it. I'll be down there this summer, so we'll get together then. Yes, indeed, Coach. Have a great day. We're going to talk to you real soon, Coach. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Back on the Boss Man Show, time for your weekly health segment with our health wealth expert, Dr. Burnett, here with us on the Boss Man Show, joining John and myself, Dr. V. What do you do? How's things down in the ATL? It's good. I'm burning up, you know. That's good. It's like a typical summer day. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be burning up. How y'all doing? Y'all in Cleveland, right? Yeah. Finals time. Yes. Finals time. Hopefully, John's mm-hmm. cast will go, go down in flames. Plan for that. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! Looks like that's what's uh, <laughs> on the horizon. <laughs> yeah, I hope that happens because they need to go down in flames asap. 
so LeBron can leave and go elsewhere and do whatever he does. Go Warriors. Oh, okay, <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes, indeed. Well, today, you want to talk to us about, you know, self-care, the importance of self-care. So what do you have for us today? We'll chime in as you break down for us the importance of self-care. Okay. Well, I want to just jump in really quick um, and keep it simple. And like I said, you are more than welcome to uh, jump into the conversation, um, you know, if something resonates with you. But, yes, you're right. We're talking about taking good care of yourself and what that even means. So I have just a, a, well, I'd say few, but that's three, but I have four uh, bullet points that I kind of want to discuss with you all briefly, and then we can kind of go from there. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, I want to start with working towards your goals, right? So we talk about goal setting. When we talk about goal setting, you want to make sure that you're focusing on your strengths when you're creating goals. Let's start over. When you're creating goals, you want to have smart goals, right? Which, who if my memory serves me right, S is for specific, M is for measurable, A is for accountability, R is for, you know, R is reliable, and T is time, reliable, and T is time management. So, whoo, I remembered. So, those are the type of goals, when you're talking about goal setting, you want to have smart goals, right? Things that you can measure, keep yourself accountable. They have a specific time frame to it. They're actually reliable goals and that they're very specific, right? So you can be able to track them appropriately and then maybe modify them if you want. But the first thing that you want to do is focus on your strengths. Then focus on solving problems. So you want to start with focusing on your strengths, right? Because it's a high note. Then you want to think about, okay, what are the things that I need to work on? whether it's in my personal or professional life, um, focus on the future, uh, and that goes more towards the long girl, long-term goal. Uh, and then the last thing about setting the goals is, you know, focus on um, what you want your life or how you want your life to progress, right? So I know I'm saying a little bit general, but a couple things that would make a little bit more sense is when you're writing down your goals, right, you can start with short-term goals. Uh, so maybe like a week, up to three weeks. Um, you can then go into intermediate goals, which are like three to nine months, three to six months. And then the long-term goals typically are nine months and beyond. What I like to do is sit still quietly and um, figure out what my bird's eye view is of what I want my personal goals and my professional goals to look like. And then I actually kind of go backwards. I go through the intermediate and then the short term. It just helps me to see exactly what I need to do and the steps that I need to take in order to accomplish my goals, whatever goals it is, right? So that would be the first thing. In addition to that, in order to track the goals, you can do it in multiple ways, but there's two main ways that I like to suggest to um, my people, which is have a journal. That's really awesome because then you can track what's going on and make some modifications. But typically, the most common way to track your goals is having vision boards. So everyone has a vision board party or they want to do their vision board. Usually, it, that's more on the female side than the male side. However, yeah, I no, I wouldn't do that to me. <laughs> well, yeah, I know you guys just have amazing memories. They're like, you know what? I'm just going to roll with it and we'll just see kind of how it unfolds. And that's that how me and John do it. That's <laughs> how y'all do it. Hey, and there's <laughs> there's yeah, no judgment I, on that. Yeah, if I miss the mark on one of my goals and it's not on paper, I can just easily shift my goal to, to where I want to be. <laughs> oh, is that how that works? Oh, okay. That's <laughs> how that works. <laughs> well, typically, and that's why I said typically women do have vision board parties where, you know, you're cutting out different clippings of magazines or writing different things on a board, and you hang it up. Um, unfortunately, our society kind of forgets about the vision board, similar to New Year's resolution, uh, maybe three months, so we're in March uh, when things kind of just disappear. But that's one of the reasons why I go to the journal first is because you can always keep that with you, um, whether you're stashing it in your work bag or your purse or you know, in your car, whatever, you can always track that. Um, moving on to the second tier, which is caring for yourself and what that looks like. So really some advice that I have just for basic self-care is live 
healthier, right? So eat healthy foods, get enough sleep, exercise regularly, avoid drugs and alcohol as much as you can, and manage your stress so that way, you know, you're better able to receive situations as they come, right? Um, another suggestion is practice good hygiene, right? So that way it's important for social, it's important for medical and psychological reasons so that way it reduces risks of um, illnesses, especially preventable illnesses. Then also you feel better, right? When you're taking care of yourself with good hygiene and then other people respond better as well. Um, build a tribe. So visit friends, family, uh, be around positive people that are going to bring about support in your life, um, especially if there's transitions that we go through, whether it's job or family changes, relationship changes, personal changes. We're always going through some type of trained in. So it's great to be able to have a tribe that supports you during those conditions. Um, another suggestion that I have is try something that you enjoy every day. And I was talking to um, a family member of mine last week, during Memorial Week, and we were talking about running through the sprinklers as a kid or climbing the monkey bars. So even stuff like that where you remember having fun as a child um, or even in your teen years or your younger years, try something that you enjoy doing, right? It reminds you of the beauty of just the simple things. And the last suggestion for basic self-care is find ways to relax, right? So meditation, yoga, getting a massage, taking a bath, um, walking in the park or climbing the mountain. And that has to do with exercise regularly. Um, the third thing so, is... Doctor, before oh, you move on, do you mind if I interject? Yeah. Well, no, I don't mind. I was going to say okay. yes, but no, I don't mind. <laughs> well, the one thing I wanted to ask you about that particular segment before you move on was, do you feel that it's um, beneficial for people when you mentioned, um, you know, taking better care of yourself and doing small things in order to do that? So, for instance, if you wanted to lose a few pounds or if you're trying to quit smoking or if you're trying to quit drinking or cut down on your drinking or smoke, whatever the case may be, do you feel like it's beneficial for people to – um, engage in those behaviors like in small doses to kind of work up to it so instead of trying to all of a sudden cut out all chocolate from your life you know because you're on a diet maybe the first week you cut back you know 10% or 20% and the next week you kind of build build on top of small successes I guess is what I'm getting at do you think it's beneficial for people to do that absolutely I mean what I what I suggest honestly and what works is taking those baby steps so that goes back to the goals, right? So if you're having weight management um, and eating healthy, track track it in your journal. Track what you're eating. Do an assessment first to see, okay, where am I at? Where am I lacking? So especially when we talk about eating healthier um, and wanting to transition into a healthier lifestyle, honestly what I tell my clients and my um, patients is that track everything. Even if it does not look so great on paper, that holds you accountable. And so – with the accountability, you're able to assess, okay, this is how much I'm taking in. Even when you talk about sugar drinks or even alcoholic drinks, I've got, you know, guys who drink beer with the guys, you know, and it's basketball season, so well, it's ending now. But still, I mean, I know that there's a higher consumption of alcohol right now because it's a social environment. Everybody's getting together for the game. Um, but even tracking that, you'll be able to understand how much um, – um, alcohol you're drinking uh, on the female side they get together the women get together and they drink wine you know so it's it, it, it's comparable on each side but it's something that relates to everyone when you're in a social atmosphere right we talk about alcohol consumption we talk about eating out how often are we eating out how often are we cooking for ourselves how often are we consuming water versus non-water product, products including coffee um, so definitely start with the assessment first. I think that's the, the baby step and acknowledgement of where you are. The other part of that is, and then, of course, you start to make the transition. Okay, let me remove, you know, ha instead of having three cups of coffee a day, let me just tear it down to two for the next two weeks. Um, or even eating out. Okay, maybe I can only eat out on, you know, Twisted Tuesdays or, you know, your favorite place that has, you know, some type of, favorite food that you have or a discount, you know, buy two, get one or whatever. Um, so start to convince those type of habits. The other part of that is the exercise. So usually what I find is um, people are so excited to make that change, especially during resolution season. They're like, 
I'm cutting everything out. I'm done. And then it's kind of like starvation mode um, for your body. And then you start craving things. And then, you know, and you work out from the gym. You're like, I'm going to work out six times a week when someone, you know, coming from a secondary lifestyle, they haven't worked out at all. So they go from zero to 100 without considering the fact that you're shocking your body. And that's not always a healthy response to it, right? If you're fasting, that's something different, whether it's religious reasons or personal reason. Um, the fasting aspect is different. When you're talking about making such a drastic lifestyle change, you're right. It's important to do those baby steps and say, you know what? I'm going to walk 30 minutes per day, three days a week. That's perfect. As you start to become more comfortable with that, then you can say, and you assess your body too. Uh, am I having aches? Are my knees hurting? Are my ankles hurting? Is my back hurting from exercising? Then you can change the type of exercise that works best for you. Maybe you need to start in a pool rather than start walking because there's less pressure on your joints being in the pool versus walking on a treadmill or on a trail. So it all comes back to not only taking the baby steps but also going through that assessment process to really be honest with yourself and say, hey, I do want to make these big changes in the future, but what can I be doing right now in the short term to make sure that it's consistent in those baby steps to make a huge um, impact in weight management and or eating healthy? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make yeah. sense. It does make sense. <laughs> we might have to hold this over. You got two more to go, don't you? I do have two more to go. Yeah, we're going to have to hold that over for next week for a part two Ooh, of self care because John's question was just so good. And how you broke down the ladies drinking the wine, probably the Soda Home or the Moscato or the, you know, other Burnett's. <laughs> you know, all, all of that good stuff. Because yes. I was saying last segment, I'm on that Bombay Sapphire. Okay. I'm hitting all that blue. Okay. The magic blue cranberry juice or the cranberry <laughs> juice or the OJ you call it it's the Bombay Sapphire okay. magical people so, <laughs> yes indeed so we're going to save three or four for next week yes. self care because lord no Dr. V got some good stuff for you yes. <laughs> yes I do I look forward to part two yes indeed folks Dr. Burnett help the winner save me we're going to come back next week we out. Yeah, yeah, it's your man JC, the host with the most, baby, and it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis.